So the next category of metal detection and, and moving on to metal discrimination is called active. And active, what it means is the device itself, like this is a, uh, what they call a pin pointer, but this device actually generates an electromagnetic pulse and that pulse will energize the metal. It'll create a field around the metal for a very short period of time. In the level of microseconds, it creates a field and then it measures that decay of that field and the presence of that decay to try to determine if there's metal presence. So if this device is just sitting out in the air, it emits a signal and it decays at a certain rate. It emits a signal and it decays at a certain rate. But when it comes in the presence of metals, the way it decays or the way it changes both the ramp up and the ramp down can tell you whether or not there's metal there. It's going to react differently to iron. It's going to react differently to copper, silver, lead, aluminum, or gold. It's pretty easy to distinguish the difference using that technique between ferrous iron objects and high conductivity metals. Most handheld metal detectors like this or the Excaliburs or the other types of metal detectors uh, that are on the market can detect the presence of metal. They're using a electromagnetic field to do that. And, and they're very accurate in the, in the size of the magnetic field, the larger the field and the larger the antenna and the sensitivity of the antenna determines how long of a distance, how far they can detect that metal away from uh, where it's actually located. One of the things that affects the ability to do that is uh, whether or not there's iron particulates in the soil. So for example, off Melbourne Beach or Juneau Beach or anywhere in Florida, there's very little uh, ferrous or metal contents in the soil. But if you get up, let's say in Alaska or off the west coast of the United States, you really do have to deal with the mineralization in the soil and you have to compensate for that. Most of these, uh, we'll call it consumer grade or even early uh, professional grade metal detectors, really only look at a very minor elements of the electromagnetic field. But in fact, there's, there's several elements that you can look at when you look at how the signal interacts with metal. Uh, the decay over time, there's frequency artifacts, there's phase artifacts. All of that tells the story of how each metal reacts to the, the field that it's introduced to. And then there's, there's pulse, which means it generates a pulse and looks for the response. And then there's what we call continuous wave or continuous transmission. And it's looking for how it distorts that transmission as it approaches the metal and passes over the metal. One way of detecting the metals is, uh, and, and we'll use a sea searcher as an example. The sea searcher has a wide aperture. It's a large device. So for example, this is, this is actually pretty much to scale. When you compare a magnetometer to the sea searcher, you can tell the sea searcher has a lot more width to it and the ability to sense things and get a multiple views of the same object. So what happens is when the sea searcher passes over an object, it has an actual real-time aperture. So it's getting multiple views of the same object at the same time. Um, that allows you to pinpoint objects. The way that a magnetometer does it is you make multiple passes over the object in what are called lanes. So you have real aperture, creating those lanes over time is called synthetic aperture. So when somebody refers to a synthetic aperture device, synthetic aperture radar, synthetic aperture sonar, what they're referring to is making multiple passes over an object over time and, and stitching those together into a single picture. What happens with the sea searcher is the sea searcher actually has multiple sensors on board. It's generating a proprietary uh, waveform that is exciting the metals. So it is an active metal discrimination. And then it's using a machine learning system to actually discern all the different attributes that we talked about, time, frequency, phase, every attribute about it to distinguish the difference between these different metal types. So as the sea searcher is passing along the ocean floor, it's intermixing sonar pulses with metal discrimination, interleaving that one and then the other when the other. And so as it's passing over, it's taking hundreds of readings of any particular metal object 
all the different metal objects. It's doing both real aperture and as it passes over a synthetic aperture so that we can actually determine the location, depth, size, shape of all of the objects as well as its metal content.